Jude. We put the forehead on the ground. And the best part of the body, the brain, and the best part of the brain, the frontal lobe, is put on the ground, which causes grounding or discharging of these extra electrostatic charges. That does not mean that if you put your hand below the musalla, the prayer mat, you'll get a shock. But there is dominance of the frontal lobe. And the thinking capacity of the brain is not on the top of the brain, it is in the frontal lobe. Therefore, we do sujood in salah. When we do sajda, there is extra blood supply going to the brain, which is responsible for a healthy brain. When you do sujood, extra blood flows into the skin of the face and the neck, which increases the blood circulation of the skin of the face, which is very healthy, especially in cold seasons. It prevents diseases such as fibrositis and chilbanes. When you do sujood, there is drainage of the paranasal sinuses, and there is less chances you'll have sinusitis, that is inflammation of the sinuses. Normally, the human beings throughout the day, they have an erect posture. And the maxillary sinus, the ostium, the opening is in the upper medial part. And the secretions, because of the erect posture, cannot be drained. Therefore, in sujood, it's like inverting a pot which is full. It causes drainage of the maxillary sinus. It also causes drainage of the secretion of the frontal sinus, the ethmoidal sinus, and the spinoidal sinus. And there's less chances a person will have sinusitis. Or if he's suffering from sinusitis, it's a natural treatment. Sujood is also a natural treatment for a person suffering from bronchiectasis, which causes drainage of the secretions of the bronchial tree. It prevents the accumulation of the secretion in the bronchial tree. It's also helpful in other pulmonary diseases in which secretions are accumulated. Besides secretions, other things like dust and bacteria can also accumulate. It's helpful in all these diseases. Normally when you breathe, only two-thirds of your lung capacity is utilized. The remaining one-third of the lung, the air remains in. Only two-thirds air comes in as fresh air and goes out. The one-third air is called as residual air. When you do sujood, the abdominal viscera, they press against the diaphragm. And the diaphragm, it presses against the lower lobes of the lung, which causes exhaling of even this residual air. So once the residual air goes out, more fresh air comes in, which is responsible for a healthy lung. Where do sujood, Due to decreased gravitational force, there is extra venous return from the abdominal organs. The venous return of the abdominal organ, it increases. The sujood and ruku, it's a good posture against femoral and esophageal hernia. It's also a prophylaxis treatment in a person suffering from hemorrhoids, which in layman's terminology is called as piles. It's also helpful in the prolapse of the uterus. When you do sujood, your weight is concentrated on the knees when your legs are flexed. And the soleus and the gastrocnemius muscles, the muscles of the leg, are also called the peripheral heart because it has an extensive venous return, which is responsible for increasing the venous return of the lower half of the body and it also causes relaxation of the lower half of the body. Where you do sujood, your knees are touching on the floor, including your hands and your forehead. This posture is helpful in disease of the cervical spine because it is helpful in the intervertebral joints. The posture of the sujood is also helpful in cardiac diseases. When a person rises from sujood in the jalsa position, in the squatting position, the blood which has flowed in the upper part of the body comes back to normalcy and his body is relaxed. There's extra blood flowing in the muscles and nerves of the thigh and the back. 
the back muscles are relaxed. It's useful and helpful in constipation and indigestion. It's helpful in a person suffering from peptic ulcer and other stomach ailments. When a person gets up from the squatting position to the calm position, to the standing position, his weight is concentrated on the ball of the feet, which improves the strength of the back muscles, thigh muscle, knee muscle and leg muscle. There are various benefits, physical and medical, when we offer Salah. But we Muslims, we don't offer Salah for these medical benefits. These are only side dishes. We offer Salah to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to thank Him. We offer Salah for guidance, to be programmed towards righteousness. These side dishes, the medical benefits, may attract a person who has less faith or may attract a non-believer. But we Muslims, our main course is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's a commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our biryani. There are some people who may ask that we see a few Muslims who offer salah five times a day but yet they cheat, they are not honest, they are unrighteous people. So how come when you say salah is a programming towards righteousness, few Muslims we know who offer five times salah, very regular, but yet they are not righteous. The answer to this question was given by the Qari in the beginning of a talk and he recited verses from Surah al muminun chapter 23, verse number 1 and 2 which says, Qad aflaha al-mu'minun al-lazinahum fi salatihim khashi'oon Indeed, successful are the believers, those who pray with humility and attentiveness. Arabic word, khashi'oon, is derived from khushu, which means humility and attentiveness. So Allah says, all those who offer salah with attentiveness and humility, they will indeed be successful. They will derive the benefits. But all those who only pray outwardly, without humility and attentiveness, they will not derive the benefits of salah. So these few Muslims, who offer salah and do not derive the benefits and are not righteous, it is because they only offer the salah outwardly without humility and attentiveness. And for a person to be attentive but natural, he should know the meaning of what is offering the salah and he should follow the commandments what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. For example, in the salah, if the Imam after Surah Fatiha recites Surah Ikhlas and says, Qul huallahu ahad, say he is Allah one and only. All the Muslims who come to the mosque to offer salah, they agree that Allah is one and only. No one says there is more than one Allah. Who is the Imam giving guidance to? What the Imam is doing, he is conveying the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Muslim and saying, Qul huallahu ahad. Say he is Allah one only. Go and tell to those people who do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who do not believe Allah is one, go and tell them that say there is Allah one and only. So the Imam is telling the Muslims, go out and tell to the other people who do not believe Allah is one, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one and only. And describe to them the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many Muslims offer salah, but when they immediately finish their salah, the message what they received in their salah has no impact on their life at all. And the main reason is because they have not understood the message. So if you don't understand the message, how will you implement it? You have to follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to derive the benefits of the salah. For example, if you have a servant who is very punctual, who is very regular in coming to work, 
and he comes to the office and he praises you but when you give him any work or ask him to even get a glass of water he continues praising you but does not get the glass of water you ring the bell and your servant comes